Welcome back to JB Reviews. I have the 2024 Ford 6.8 liter and 24 Chevy Silverado with a 6.6 .6 liter gas. Which engine is a better buy for you? I borrowed these trucks from Larry H. Miller Super Ford here in Salt Lake City and Jerry Signer Chevrolet here in Salt Lake. Be sure to check out the inventory. Both of these trucks are available for sale. Let's start off with the Chevy first. So this 6.6 .6 liter engine was introduced back in 2020, which was a pretty big deal because Chevy takes a long time to do updates on their powertrains. And I'm hoping they do something soon with this engine to really stay relevant compared to the Ford. But this is a cast iron block with nodular iron main caps. The cylinder heads are gonna be cast aluminum. And one thing I like about this engine is the crankshaft is gonna be forged steel. Also, the camshaft is a billet steel material. So this is a pretty overbuilt engine. 401 horsepower comes on around 5,200 RPMs and the 464 pound-feet of torque comes on around 4,000. Now, when you think about bore and stroke, you have 4.06 inches by 3.86 inches. So be sure to keep that in mind when I go over the 6.8 liter, okay? Now compression is 10.8 to one. So compression's not that high. So a lot of people say you can run 87 octane on this engine because it's not built for premium fuel, which any engine that has over 400 horsepower, in my opinion, you should probably consider that, especially if you're gonna be working it, towing a big trailer. But apart from that, this engine is definitely a strong contender in the marketplace. So this is considered the entry level gas engine from Ford, but believe it or not, it actually holds up pretty well against the Chevy. This is gonna have an iron block, aluminum heads. As far as the crankshaft goes, they are using a forged crankshaft, and this engine puts out pretty impressive horsepower and torque. 405 horsepower, and that comes on around 5,000 RPMs, and 445 pound-feet of torque, which comes on around 4,000, just like the Chevy behind me. So they do cam in the block on this engine, and it is pretty overbuilt for a gas engine, but they have the 7.3 if you do want more horsepower and torque, which definitely does trump the Chevy and Ram pickup trucks. Now let's talk about the transmission, starting with the Ford this time. One thing I like about Ford is they do give you options, and that's something that I always will recommend. If you are looking to tow heavy with a gas engine, I think Ford gives you better offerings, and I'm gonna explain that here in a second. But this 10-speed transmission is not the exact same one that's behind the 7.3. So this is the 10R100. The transmission behind the 7.3 is a 10R140. And I did a video on that if you'd like to take a look at it, but the first gear in this transmission is a four six nine six to one ratio that is pretty deep this truck also has a 373 out back but one thing i like about ford is they know that when you go higher above elevation your horsepower is going to suffer for that right so they do offer a 430 rear end but i will admit when you have pretty deep first second and third gears you don't really need that 430 when you're at or below sea level, right? So second gear in this transmission on the Ford, it starts at a 298. That is pretty deep, and third gear is a 2146 to one. Now, one thing about the GM truck is they do have the stamped approved Allison's. I think that you can call this an Allison transmission because Allison gave them the approval to basically name it that, so yes. This 10-speed transmission is built by Chevy, but GM did get some wisdom from Allison during the process. So when you think about the gearing in this transmission, first gear is a 454. So like I said, they have some pretty deep first gear. So that's gonna give you that grunt off the line to get that weight going if you're towing heavy. Second gear in this transmission is a 287. And then the third gear is a 206 to one. Now the only disadvantage that Chevy does is they do not allow you to get any more lower gearing out back. Now like I've said in the past, if you plan on towing heavy, I like to see those options because when you're higher above sea level, that will affect you. So the 373 is the only ax ratio you can get. Now something to consider is this. With the Ford 6.8 liter, you cannot get this engine on any other trim level other than the XL trim level. Now this is an STX 
truck, right? That's basically a appearance package for the XL work pickup, okay? So just keep that in mind. And that's the only disadvantage to this engine. If you want to get an XLT or Lariat King Ranch Platinum, you have to move up to the 7.3, which is going to cost you more money because you cannot get the 7.3 without four-wheel drive. Now, most guys looking to use these gas engines for like work truck applications, that might be a big deal because you know, hey, it's less weight, which means better fuel economy, right? With this gas engine from Chevy, you can get this 6.6 .6 liter, which is the gas LAT, from the work truck all the way to the high country. With the Ford, if you want the highest trim level, which is a limited, you cannot get a gas engine. Now here's another advantage that Ford has for their trucks. This is for gas or diesel, but you have what's called measurements. And I like the fact that they give you your engine coolant temperature, transmission temperature, and engine oil temperature. So Chevy does give you a analog meter basically, but they don't show you a number. I personally like to see numbers because sometimes when you're unloaded, it's good to monitor the temperature so when you are planning to tow your trailer, you have an idea of how it changes the transmission temperature. That's probably the biggest thing that's affected is the transmission temperature. Now, if you're towing heavy, obviously your engine coolant is gonna be affected and it's gonna go up probably by 20 to 30 degrees and same thing goes for your engine oil. And when it's 100 degrees outside, you're going up steep grades. This is just something nice to have. Now, let's go ahead and see what Chevy gives you. GM does allow you to customize the screen. You guys can see on the left here, I have the transmission temperature on the left side. You can put your tire pressure monitoring, but you cannot see a number for things like your coolant and they don't even have an engine oil temperature at all. So you guys can see right here, you can add more things down below. So they show you your transmission on just a regular gauge and they show your battery voltage, lastly your oil pressure so i would like to see more from them let's see how many quarts of oil both trucks take the chevy silverado hd uses a 5w30 and eight quarts of oil is needed for this truck and the same thing goes for the ford now most people will tell you you can go 7500 miles on an oil change i would tell you right now most guys that own these trucks that i've spoken with they typically do their oil changes 5,000 miles or sooner. I think anything less than 4,000 miles might be a little extreme. Now, it depends on if you're using your truck to tow heavy. That might be a factor that you might want to start at least checking that oil pretty frequently at 3,500 miles, but I think that's kind of low. But hey, if you want to make sure that your truck runs for a long time, I can understand you wanting to do that because the cost of oil versus the cost of an engine, it's a lot more expensive to replace an engine. Now, you consider tank capacity chevy actually wins with the standard bed pickup truck so this is a 36 gallon fuel tank and you can run e85 with chevy's too as far as the ford goes with the 6.8 liter engine you can also run e85 however the standard bed trucks have a 34 gallon fuel tank standard now if you get a long bed pickup this is where ford wins they do have a 48 gallon standard capacity tank on their trucks and I like that about them and last thing I want to go over with you guys is the engine sound let's start with the Ford When you think about the RPMs, the Ford cuts off around 5,500 RPMs. Chevy's is exactly the same. So 5,500 RPMs. Now here's the final question, which truck makes more sense? If you are looking at the 6.8 liter and the 6.6 .6 liter with Chevy, 
you're probably gonna want the Chevy simply because the 6.8 liter is only available with the XL work truck model. Whereas you can get the 6.6 gas with Chevy on any trim level. Now, that's not a bad thing because obviously if you go with the 7.3, you have more horsepower and more torque. And it's just a better powertrain because you get the 10R 140 transmission which has better torque handling compared to this one. But I like the idea of the 36 gallon fuel tank on the Chevy with the standard bed. I don't really need a long bed, so for me, this is the better way to go for myself. But I think that Chevy has a lot of work to do. I hope that they do add more power to this truck. I did a performance test, however, with both of these pickups that you're gonna see in the near future. This truck is a lot faster than my gas truck that I had for 2024, right? And let's see how it does up against the 6.8 liter for fuel economy and acceleration. So you don't want to miss that video. Again, special shout out again to Larry H. Miller Super Ford and Jerry Signer Chevrolet here in Salt Lake City. If you would like to buy these trucks, they are available. See you guys soon.